Uh, my name is Ajay Rana, and I have uh, produced two of my works uh, in Photo Kathmandu. Uh, I was one of the participants in the residency that Photo Kathmandu had come up with. And we went for a month uh, to Kao Suti, uh, to the Jatayu culture restaurant. And uh, it was a new experience for me because uh, previously, uh, my background is wildlife uh, documentation and I generally write about conservation also. So getting into this uh, community where storytelling uh, and uh, showing your art uh, was pretty new for me also, like uh, uh, joining a festival. So previously it was more like a, a run and gun uh, thing for me, like going to a place, uh, staying there for maybe three, four days, uh, documenting the species over there. And my background was basically uh, uh, I have a repository, uh, a blog uh, in the repository where I document the species uh, that I found in Nepal. So all my work is almost centered around that part and whenever there's a story or conflict that happens then I write about that uh, uh, in newspapers. So staying in the residency was pretty new for me and uh, also the organizers gave us a month where they uh, give us uh, free reign, I guess, uh, on anything we could come up with. Or if we can't, then that was also an option, I guess. So uh, for me, having that freedom, I could explore a lot of areas uh, in that place. So uh, to be honest, like uh, when I was there for, I think, uh, the first four days, uh, uh, my mind was completely blank on what to produce, right? Because uh, residency was new for me and creating a block of work was, I guess, pretty new. Uh, staying for a month, that's a long time, right? But in the end, uh, I found that one month is pretty small, short as well. It was, uh, I would love to stay in that place for another month, exploring more things. But uh, during that time, uh, what I was able to do was uh, uh, since I was documenting birds, uh, uh, plants and animals uh, uh, before. So for me, my first uh, concentration on the work was what kind of species are there? How does it function? Uh, and I also like the community forest over there that had created a grassland. So I was just looking at options. And then one day uh, when I was uh, at the vulture feeding uh, program, uh, a dog came running in uh, and chased away the vultures, right? So uh, uh, previously I had produced uh, works where I documented uh, the canine and the wildlife conflict and also wrote about it. So uh, when seeing it firsthand at that place, uh, then I was like, okay, this is one body of work that I'll continue uh, uh, working on and then uh, bring out something uh, to showcase at the end. So uh, this uh, like conservation conflict in our household is one of the work. It's not complete. It's uh, mostly research-based as well. So uh, the photos you see up there are more like an evidence-based uh, material. And below on the table, uh, more of the stuffs that are already in the news. So it's become a research material for me also. And I'm sharing it with others also so that they can see that it's not just our only problem, but it's a global problem, right? And connecting with it, uh, I also uh, am talking about distemper virus. So the canine distemper virus, uh, it's not talked that much in the world, right? So for me, uh, this was one of those conflict uh, that the canine brought in and also the virus that it uh, like spread around wildlife, it, if it was uh, amongst the wildlife. So uh, one of those materials, uh, like uh, the research papers that had come out, like uh, very limited research papers. So I have put two research papers that were done. Uh, one was in the Annapurna region. One was uh, of, uh, fairly recently, uh, uh, it was published in January 28. So I've put this so that people can understand uh, what the condition is, right? And I've also 
uh, connect it with the solution. Like there's a solution for it, right? Uh, it's it's a long-term solution. It's uh, not like uh, everyone's looking for a short-term solution, but it doesn't help. So uh, I've tried to summarize it uh, through uh, the research papers and the production. So with this work, uh, while I was in uh, Cow City, uh, in the buffer zone, there's a community forest uh, that is well maintained, I guess. And I was also studying about grassland and then uh, the way they were keeping their grassland maintained was pretty inspiring because uh, in modern days, uh, like these days, especially when uh, big companies uh, talk about carbon offset and we need to plant trees or we'll donate the money and then you guys plant trees, those kind of things are coming. The grassland kind of takes a sidestep, right? So uh, for me, talking about grassland and why is it important to keep it that way uh, was much more relevant. So just to give you an example, uh, in Tarai, uh, before the 1950s, uh, it was a sea of grassland with forests as well, right? Uh, but now only 2% is left of it. So imagine the fastness that has been reduced uh, because of uh, urbanization or many other factors, right? So uh, I'm talking about that and also uh, I'm trying to suggest that there are indigenous people that are also benefiting from the grassland. And that was, uh, that's been the case for thousands of years, right? And when we talk about conservation, I guess we also need to think about the indigenous people who were in that land and work together, not just uh, talk about, okay, this is a conserved land, no one's allowed to enter. Uh, and thinking about it, it was someone else's habitat, right? So they were living together uh, with the wildlife. Uh, so it was co-existing. So now we are also separating that. So kind of touches that subject, but these two are my long-term projects also. So the body of work continues to grow. Uh, as the time comes. So that's about it. So my name is uh, Jonas Button. I'm an artist from Stockholm, Sweden, uh, and I work within an artistic collaboration called Hillside Projects. And uh, I've been representing Hillside Projects at the uh, Photo KTM residency in Cavasotti. It took place at the Yatayo Vulture restaurant and we actually have been working with the, the topic of vultures for quite a few years now. And mainly we work, our work is often centered quick around the disappearance of species, especially birds. And amongst these tales, we're kind of trying to find the in-between stories that are kind of arise through the tales of disappearance. So often we kind of bring in some social political narratives to kind of, uh, to explain how, how things fit together on a larger scale, not only about the birds. But anyway, so we've been working with the topic of the vulture and coming to, uh, on a residency, I always find it's problematic because um, the idea, idea of residency itself is problematic. The way it functions, you just drop uh, an artist in a place where they don't, don't really belong, they don't really have the context. For me, this residency was really good because I had the context of the vulture already, but still I'm in a foreign place and especially me, I'm like the most foreign person in this place. And I think about that a lot because I see many times, you know, the artists, they travel around the world on residences and they just appropriate where they be at. And I don't like this thing so much. I, I try to think about who am I in this place, you know, like what am I doing here? So instead of really <laughs> instead of trying to, you know, put the spotlight on the place and trying to respond to the place too much, I kind of more put the spotlight on myself. Who am I in this place? And we work a lot with performance, video, um, storytelling, yeah? So I was trying to impersonate the character of the tourist, how to say, because that's kind of what I will be in this place. Uh, that's why I made sure to always dress like I had this suit. I was always dressing wherever I went, I was dressing in a suit. And I was also looking at myself, we were joking a lot because the topic of birds was very present in this place. 
because it's the Yatayo Vulture restaurant. It's a conservation, um, conservation products for vultures. But in general, it's a BCN are active there, which is bird conversation, conservation of Nepal. And it's just a lo lot of things are centered around birds, right? And there was a lot of birders there, as they call themselves. And I'm not that, but I still see this idea about me as this tourist. So I was always dressing in this suit. And uh, I see myself as this exotic bird, we were joking. That was the joke. And also even more, I see myself as this invasive species. I was joking as being that. But anyway, so I was, <coughs> I had some work that I already was engaging with before I was coming to Yatayu. And it's uh, about listening to the more than human. I always like, uh, in my context, uh, like I noticed in uh, Nepal, people say non-human, but we, we like to say more than human as a way of not really non-human sounds. Uh, there's some hierarchy in that word. So more than human is just, so anyway, we're trying to engage with the vulture in the conversation about the disappearance. And we do that in a way of listening. Because the idea about listening to the modern human is very important because I feel like that's not so much being talked about. Like humans always do our things. We decide everything. We don't really pay attention to what the modern human wants. So the idea of listening is a gesture from our side. And we worked before about listening. So what we do is I was sitting, I would place myself in my suit amongst the vultures when they feed, because they talk a lot when they feed, so it's a perfect time to listen to them. So I was sitting there for whole feeding sessions, and uh, we record all the sound quite perfectly, and then afterwards I would transcribe the sound perfectly using onomatopoeia, which is the way you transcribe the phonetics of sounds, so the way they sound like. Uh, so it could be like nonsense, it could sound like but it could also be mixed in with more uh, conceptual onomatopoeia because it's also the onomatopoeia is also the language of comics or graffiti, you know, they splash, pam, and all, chirp, chirp, like all of these sounds that we have are also onomatopoeia, so I mix them in and I have a mixture of uh, Hindi, Nepali, and English onomatopoeia and then mix it with the nonsense or the nonsense or the non language. Uh, or the other language that the vultures are speaking. So that was the idea. So it's like a conceptual performance. I sit there, the video, and then we made it into a video. So it's a 45 minutes where I sit listening to the vultures. Uh, but apart from that, at Yatai, I've just been really trying to pay attention and just getting to learn how they work there because it's so much more than the vulture feeding. Because the feeding pro process is very have to say, it's like a big spectacle. People come there to have a look at the vultures feeding. And again, you have these birders, these tourists sitting with the big cameras, like uh, sh shooting birds or like even that. It's such a, I don't know, the act is, I even, I think I watch more the people watching the birds. And actually, so for me, those are interesting things, but also seeing how they work around the whole feeding because it's a whole cycle because they have a, they collect all the dead or really sick dying cows from uh, the neighboring villages. So it's like, maybe it's a, like a 10 kilometer radius where they collect all the, they call them and they come and collect the dead or sick cows. And then ha they have created a, uh, like a small farm for them because they're not de dead all the time. And then they, when they're dead, they're fed to the, to the vultures and then what is left because the vultures don't eat the bones, they don't eat the, the skin. So the skin is being sold to some place where they make these drums and the bones are being sold. <coughs> the bones are being sold to a factory that makes uh, buttons for shirts and stuff, I think. So it's like a whole circle and also the way they really work. It's a really, uh, DBG, the founder, uh, the coordinator of Yatayu has really interesting ideas about conservation, the way he bases it really in the community, because he sees that conservation can only work if it's community-based, which I think is super clever and really unusual. Instead of these big organizations coming somewhere, again, this foreign entity just coming somewhere, creating all these rules, and the people living there just have to obey to the rules, otherwise they, they can really... Um, 
suffer from uh, accusations, people be facing jail time for picking leaves in the forest or what's not. So, but he's trying to make it differently, which I think is really interesting. So I work with the children in the local schools and I raised an inquiry around who am I? Ma ko hum. That's the Nepali expression. So of course these children are from the different communities, Tharu, Guru, many communities and the school is again a particular kind of education system which is more homogenizing I would say. So what I did was uh, thinking through art, thinking through drawing, storyboarding, body mapping. So I kept doing different, I worked with uh, two particular groups of uh, young people. They are in the age group of uh, 12 years, 13 years old onwards and up to 15 to 16. And uh, the whole inquiry was around their how they think about themselves and their immediate environment. So a lot of simple exercises, like let's say this one was a body mapping, how big am I? And then making connections with uh, what is big. So like this, these, these are all different exercises. These are their stories. And how these stories generated a communication around who am I? And somewhere in my practice, always what I engage with when I work together with people and community around. So there is a, what I do as an artist that informs that and vice versa. So a lot of what was happening there was also uh, informing me that how it will, uh, let's say the vulture narrative. Now, there was so much talk about vulture conservation. Every We went to the feeding and all of that experience and listening to Divi Chaudhary Ji, who is a, such a naturalist of uh, such an incredible intensity. Now, this whole narrative is at the back of my head. And here I do a simple photography exercise around identity. What can become your self-portrait? And I'm thinking of connecting the two. It's not like I tried running a vul the vulture narrative with them. Rather, what I tried was I was doing something there. And I was going through all these varied experiences and how the two was informing each other. So here in this corner, what you see is this is something I will work. Uh, afterwards, I go back home and then I will process it further. So one is here. It's the vulture asking, who am I? And then this who am I, if you see, there is some really subtle indications of um, who they are as young people and who they are as younger people from particular communities, certain choices, aspirations, personal desires, all of that. Uh, so identity is, there are so many I when we think of it, no? And which I? <laughs> so there are many I that I probably got revealed. And as I will be reading more through whatever has, has been the outcome of this process, probably it will become clearer to me. Now, while this is going on, then here comes the vulture as a natural cleaner. So uh, before this, this is something I'd worked earlier also with the Asia Art Archive. I had developed a learning at home series called What Did I Clean Today? This was during COVID. This was a module. It was an art exercise designed for there, like when online teaching was happening during COVID. Now with this What Did I Clean Today? The concern comes like how these photographs inform each other. But in the longer run, in terms of the narrative, probably I'll be thinking more about um, bringing these different levels at which 
keeping the vulture narrative, keeping the process of the residency that I went through and then bringing other aspects, opening up. So this will be more like a, I plan to work like, uh, like a children's content, younger people, for young people content. So while all of this was going on, as you can see, there are many, many subtle stories. So I was also thinking, how do I respond to these material? And that's how this uh, little intervention, this audio that you hear, where I'm reiterating certain <coughs> words. So, and in that notebook, there's a cursive handwriting practice of those words. So, um, it's almost like <coughs> a, a critique of, institutional critique of certain kind. It also is about, um, the gap between the practice and policy or theory and what happens on ground, context and what are uh, particularly uh, how we engage with, how meaningfully we engage with. So like this, there are several, several things like all these drawings are full of stories. And then this also made me think how people think of drawings. So, uh, there's a zine that talks about almost a drawing talking about who, what it is. So like this, these are all reiteration of who am I for me. <laughs>